give you a sort of inspiration that you can be taken serious and you can be respected without really having to fuck everybody up in your path. You know, you don't have to be on such a self-destructive path to get where he was. Michael Frey was the person to basically get in between the guns, you know, of Rafel's crew and the Trinidad crew. It's a dangerous job to be a peacemaker. It's a dangerous job to always be the voice of reason. I don't know how he felt always being in the middle. imagine how it felt to always be in the middle and I understand taking on that job you know but once you're doing it and it's for you know young men but y'all grown you know listen y'all gonna have to figure this shit out y'all gonna have to figure out how the fuck to talk to each other it doesn't matter what hoods we come from we come from the same place if you in DC you know, D.C. is D.C. We got to stop separating the streets so goddamn much and really just come together. And obviously, the police have been had a vendetta against black men. And for, for a various number of reasons that are their own, you know what I mean? It shouldn't have to be another person that comes in and tells us, how senseless this is, how stupid it is to be fighting over nothing and just and going to wanting blood over small shit. Now, another thing that I want to mention is how much love that Michael Frey showed to people that he cared about. And one thing that I read that just floored me was that he put money on, you know, a lot of people's books while they was incarcerated. That's all across the nation. Like, he had connections everywhere, and if his friends or if his associates that he cared about was in a jam, he wanted to make them as comfortable as possible, and I can really only, you know, respect that from the bottom of my heart because it's a lot of niggas that's in jail, it's a lot of niggas that's in whatever you want to call it, prison, the penitentiary, that have, you know, how many friends? How many people on the outside that won't even put $10 on their books? Like, honestly, won't even put nothing on their on they phone so they can call their mother or call or speak to their child. Nothing. Nothing at all. So, time and time again, I, I can think of numerous situations where niggas been asked out. Niggas ain't had nobody to call, nobody would pick up the phone, none of that. And if he cared about you, if, if he knew, you know, had one situation with you, one scenario, and you was in a jam, he would look out for you. A lot of niggas need to look at who Michael Frey is. A lot of niggas need to have these characteristics because sometimes with some people I do understand you can't help everybody because everybody not going to be grateful for it. Everybody not going to appreciate it, you know, like the next man would. But I feel like that's that's in doing and seeing, you know, once you do that and then you see appreciative a person can be. You'll always remember that. And that's why I appreciate him because it only takes one time. And and then you continue to to help people. You continue to look out for people. You continue to do that. And then for those people that show you that they're not grateful, you just don't do it for them. I appreciate and I love talking about people that came before me because these are the values that everybody should have. And in reality, they don't. But that is what it is, too. I'll pray for you. In part two, I will be talking about the murder of Michael Frey. But to end this one off, 
I wanted to speak on his relationship or his instances or scenarios with Alpo Martinez. <laughs> and going through the relationship or the scenarios that Michael Frey had with Alpo, I can say that Michael Frey did not respect Alpo. And for whatever reason, even though he was linked to a lot of drama in the city, Michael Frey didn't want to extinguish him. But one thing that he did do was extort Alpo. And maybe a lot of people wouldn't see it as extortion. I just call it extortion, you know? And honestly, a smooth extorter. Because with the power that Michael Frey had, it was nothing. Absolutely nothing that Alpo could do about Michael Frey taking his bricks. And I don't think that he spoke on Michael Frey taking his bricks. I don't think that he spoke on how smooth Michael Frey did that. And for whatever reason. And honestly, it might be because Alpo knows and understands how respectful Michael Frey has always been nothing bad that you can say about a man who holds himself with so much respect. Michael Frey didn't respect Alpo. He didn't too much care for him. You know, looking at it from the outside looking in, he was comfortable in his position, you know. And like I said, I don't know like how I would react to always having to be the peacemaker of things of small situations but um I could just tell that he was comfortable with his position and you know comfortable with the way things work and that can be a good thing and a bad thing you know being respected so much is going to be some people that don't respect you on the same level that the other people do Maybe that wasn't a thought because he was one of the oldest or not one of the oldest But he was up there in age compared to like maybe 10 years post senior So he was up there in an age where you know you done done everything bad and you ready to Really just move forward in a positive way and teach people that but when drugs and money and you know other people from other states come into play shit does go down and also how he felt about alpo let's go to that for a second i feel like after smoothly extorting alpo you know because that's what i'm gonna call it i believe i said this before but if you extort somebody and you not beating them up and you not putting your hands on them or getting them killed um, and still taking those things, I can respect it. You know what I'm saying? That's just how I am. I respect a smooth extorter versus, you know, Wayne Perry, who always or majority of the time took what he needed, but, you know, killed you in the process. So with all that being said, I feel as though he thought of Alpo as a sucker, you know, as somebody who wouldn't stand up to him, didn't stand up to him, and you know was basically a chump but with that you can't underestimate a person that you call a chump because you know i believe that a lot of people that was in the game was paranoid about getting killed or getting set up and michael frey wasn't one of them people that had that type of concern on a day-to-day -day basis a lot of people did have that concern so you can't underestimate somebody, especially from another city. Having heard about what he was into before he even came to D.C. and killing Rich and all that. He heard about all of that. Michael Frey wasn't tripping, you know what I'm saying? As long as it wasn't no issue. But the thing about Alpo that I realized was, I realized that it's a lot of indirect um, feelings that he had you know it's a lot of feelings that he didn't express to the people that he should have expressed it to and instead he had them killed you know instead of having a conversation with rich you know a real conversation with rich about the money he got him killed instead of talking to big head gary about what he talked about on the jail call or talking to him about 
nigga, um, calling his wife, play wife a bitch, all of that. You could have had a conversation with him and you didn't do it. So, it doesn't surprise me at all that, you know, um, Michael Frey didn't see his murder coming. He didn't see it coming from Alpha. And being comfortable in your position, you really don't get paranoid every day. You know, being respected by everybody and having that happen every day, you don't think about somebody setting you up, especially a person that you've took things from, but he didn't show you nothing. He didn't show you he felt no type of way about the money that was being lost. So, you know, again, I will get into Michael Frey's murder in the next part of this video, in part two. But I just wanted to end this video off the right way and say rest in peace to Michael Frey. And it's, it's only a couple things that was his downfall. You know, I Every wish and I hope that more men and young men look at who Michael Frey is and really just get some inspiration of his character. You know, because this is what, 20 to 30 years after his life ended and I'm here. 23 years old talking about it you know and that that speaks volumes on his character um positively you know and we will get into his murder and everything else we need to get into in the next video if there is something specific that you want me to talk about in my next video just let me know and i will include it and yeah it's your girl b octavia thank you for watching this video Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your support. And again, thank you for hearing me out. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And I'm out. <laughs>